I'm making one of Minecraft's most iconic mega bases. This is what the base looks like right now. But in this video, we're going to transform it into a magical castle that reaches all the way up to the build limit. All the progress made in this single video has taken over 200 hours of work. So if you want to see more crazy stuff like this, definitely subscribe. And if you already have, thank you. It helps me out a lot. Now, before we get right into it, let me catch you up on what has already happened in this swamp biome behind me. Yeah, you heard me right. This biome used to be all watery and smelly, and there were witches living here. It was a nasty place, so I did the only reasonable thing. I destroyed everything. I removed the swamp and then placed over 400,000 snow blocks and snow layers to build back a beautiful cold biome. Why all the snow and ice though? Well, it's a funny thing. And I can only really explain it as this world seed made me do it. When I started this world, I spawned in a really cold place and everything just looked like a fairy tale. So I decided to make the world as coherent as I can and match the theme by transforming this place to feel really cold too. Winter is coming. So after all that terraforming, we find ourselves here at the base of a mountain that hides away my industrial zone. Big difference, but it all serves a purpose. You see, I'm on a mission here. And it's not even a mission really. It's a journey. Together with you guys, I want to make this world my favorite Minecraft world ever. And having all the farms hidden away in my base, while everything still looks and feels magical, is a huge part of that. You can't see it from the outside, but there are so many farms here already. And we are definitely going to need even more farms. But there's something more urgent that needs to be fixed right now before we focus on more industry. The thing is, I am now a man who has placed over half a million blocks for his mega base. But I am also a man who doesn't really have a base just yet. Because this is where I live. And everybody knows. You can have all the farms in the world, but in the end, you're only as cool as your base. So we better start building. The days of me living in a modest house are numbered. I'm going to build myself a big ass castle. But to pull that off, we need a proper plan. I need to build a framework. I have to make absolutely sure that the shape is right before moving on to steps three and four. Then we have to collect all the required materials. We have to replace the framework with the actual build, add details to make it look good. And finally, we have to set up all the farms that we're still missing. Now, we're going to do all of that without any help from outside software and building modes. Because honestly, that just ruins the Minecraft magic for everyone. This world is all just me, you, and a bunch of blocks. So let's start with step one. I need a framework. But before we can start working on that, I have to check one thing. I need to know how much room we have to build the castle. You see, the mountain I made is already quite high. Luckily, the build limit is higher than it used to be. So while old bases could only be 256 blocks tall, now you can build 384 blocks up from the bottom of the world. That is almost 130 blocks more. And I'm going to use all of it. So I towered up all the way from the mountain summit to see exactly how much space was left to work with. Now sand is the perfect block to use here. I'll show you why later on. But using sand is going to save us a crazy amount of time. There is one thing that sand can do under normal circumstances though, which is building horizontally because it falls down. So I needed a different block for horizontal lines. As much as I like the snow blocks, I don't think we're going to be able to see much unless I grab something that isn't white. Luckily, I have planned ahead. Wool is the standard framework and block for any self-respecting Minecraft player. So I had already made a sheep farm right here under the mountain. And the cool thing is you can color this block. 
So I got the wool from there and then grabbed some blue orchids from the flower farm to color the wool light blue. And with that, we could actually see what we we're doing. And so the frameworking began. I'll be honest with you. When I started this project, I had no idea what this castle was going to look like, but I actually think that was for the best. You see, this mountain is um, odd. So if we had just slammed any castle on there, it would have looked weird. The only way this was going to work was with a custom loony design. So I decided to wing it big time. Now, my name might be loony, but I'm not some unhinged lunatic. So there was a little bit of method to the madness. To understand the space I had to work with, I put a bunch of marker blocks on the top of the mountain to count out the spacing of different parts from the central tower. A few sugars of sand and an hour of a professional Minecraft player's time later, we had ourselves the start of a framework for the castle. Now, if you're anything like my stream chat the day I built this, you probably have a question right now. Uh, Looney, are you building a sand castle? No, I'm not. Hang on. Let me pull a little bit of replay mod magic to isolate this thing so I can explain what I'm doing here. The reason that this looks weird is that normally I build a framework for the outlines of a project and that's it. This castle is something else though. This thing is so big and it has such an unpredictable shape that we need a little more help. These sand walls let me visualize the final shape much better. And with a castle this big, I want to try and get things right the first time. And all the leftover sand just isn't going to be a problem. Trust me on that one. Once I had all the sand walls in place, as well as markers for possible tower locations, it was time to add some complexity to the shape. Uh oh, that's a scary word. But I'm here to help you out. We're going to make complex things simple, like really simple. This is ages two and up. So if an actual toddler can understand it, then you can too. Let me explain how we're going to make complex things really simple. What if I told you that regardless of where you go, there are actually very few complex buildings out in the world. I mean, sure, this place looks complicated, right? Well, if we look closely, it's nothing more than a bunch of simple shapes put together. Simple shapes like these. Just about every building out in the real world is a combination of rectangles, triangles, cylinders, and arches. And they're everything you need to make complicated stuff like this, this, or this. So if we apply that principle in Minecraft, then we can literally make anything we can dream up. There's more that I could explain, but for now, let's just add some more simple shapes to the framework we already have. At this point of construction, I wanted to add another layer to the build to form the inner castle. So I flew under the mountain to grab more wool from the sheep farm and some poppies from the iron farm to make red wool, which I used as a ring around the inside of the sand walls to add a temporary snow floor on the inside. Snow is actually the best block in the game if you ask me, but I'll tell you why in a little bit. For now, we had a floor in place, so I could go ahead and add more simple shapes. Let's quickly look back at the wooden blocks to find some shapes we could use here. A rectangle with a triangle works as a house or as a large hall if we make it bigger. And a cylinder with just about anything on top is perfect as a tower. That's really everything we need for this stage. I used sand pillars to mark out the corners of a large hall and then used more light blue wool to put a triangular roof shape on that. Simple enough, right? Now, to make it a little more complex, let's add another one here on the side. It's still just another rectangular box with a triangle on top added to what we already had. I'm not entirely sure if you can see it yet, but the basic shape of the build is really starting to come together. However, I was running out of sand, so a quick trip to the desert was needed. As I was getting ready, I ran into a small issue though. Most of my sugar boxes were already full because they were slowly filling up with the output from the farms under the mountain. So I had to make a quick trip to the end to raid a few ant cities. And done. I only got 26 sugar shells on that quick trip, but 
I really wanted to keep grinding out the castle progress. So I made my way back through the end portal into the overworld and flew out to the desert to collect sand for temporary blocks and sandstone, which I intended to use for the inner castle buildings. Just a few minutes after I made it to the desert, my sugar boxes were already starting to fill up. That's when I realized I was facing a bottleneck that I would run into again and again. So I decided that I had to get a farm which I never expected to build. But if I was going to build a sugar farm, there was only one place where we could build it. I had to transport a shulker all the way from the end to my industrial area under the mountain. But that's the story for the 2000 Days movie. Let me summarize it by saying that I placed a lot of ice, flew a lot more, and I almost lost my world to a glitch in the end again. Yet, we ended up with one of the hardest farms to get set up, right here under the mountain. It took me two days, but I ended that second stream with plenty of sand and a sugar farm. It's a long story, really. Worthy of a spot in the movie because it is way too dramatic for this video. Okay, let's get back on track, shall we? I had the sand I needed to continue work on the castle, as well as plenty of sugar boxes to store it. But there were a lot more resources that I needed to start construction on the next part. I was planning to use cobblestone, diorite, polished diorite, calcite, and a mixture of strip birch, sandstone, smooth sandstone, and cut sandstone. Most of those are quite easy, but I ran into another technological bottleneck at this point. Smooth sandstone is made by putting regular sandstone in a furnace. Now, we could do that manually, but the whole point of this project is to have one base where all our farms are located together in one place. At this point, we didn't have an automated furnace yet, but we're so far into the world now. I can't get away with a basic automated furnace. This simply wouldn't do. No, we were going all the way with this one. So first, I had to get all the resources together for the biggest redstone build yet. We needed a lot of iron. Check. We needed a lot of redstone. Also check. We needed a lot of gold. Well, I already had the farm, but it was time to move the output for the gold farm underground. It is one of the very few nether portals that I've managed to line up without using F3. If you're curious how I did that, that's in the 1000 Days movie. Anyway, this couldn't be above ground anymore, so I mined down into the mountainside and reconstructed the storage for the farm so we could now access it from the industrial area under the mountain. Now, I try not to AFK in the world at all, since it's a waste of your game days. But in this case, I stood on top of the gold farm for a few minutes anyway, because I really wanted to get all the powered rails to build the super smelter. And check, with that, we had the gold as well. Now it was time to start putting together the core of the super smelter. This is a design by Tango Tech, or at least it used to be before I ruined it by building it from memory. Still, I would encourage you to do the same. Make an effort to figure out how farms work and then rebuild them rather than following along block by block. Some farms are just too complicated to do this, but I find that you learn a lot each time. And most of the time, you don't need ultimate efficiency to get enough output. Realistically, you don't need 2 million items per hour if it's just you in your single player world. In the end, there were a couple mistakes left in the smelter, but after some troubleshooting, I got the modules set up in a way where they will work. Now, it just needed some fuel. And that's where things got a little tricky. I decided to go with bamboo for fuel and the easiest way to set up the bamboo farms on either side of the smelter is to build them above the level of the center module. Now, we could do that of course, but there's a downside to it. You see, this is a big space under the mountain, but I would like to keep it that way. Even though this area is hidden away, I intend to decorate it when the time comes. So even my industrial area ends up looking good. I'm not going to spoil the plan just yet, but I'm confident it will end up looking better if we keep the center of the cave relatively close to the ground. So I built the bamboo farms as low down as I could and opted for a collection system that makes regular trips with minecarts underneath to pick up the drops. That way I could get away with a lower ceiling, saving as much space for later as I possibly could. Finally, I added bubble elevators here to drop the bamboo into the hoppers from where it will be distributed. And then the minecarts and their unloaders. That should do it. 
only one half of the super smelter was now done, but it was already much better than manually putting everything into furnaces. So I decided to do the other bamboo farm later because it was time to get back to building a castle. At this point, most of the blocks on my list were taken care of, but we actually hadn't figured everything out just yet. We've only really talked about the foundational blocks, but any decent build needs character or detail blocks as well. And for this project, I have some rather specific ones in mind. The castle is going to have a lot of gray and white, and it's in a cold biome. Or at least it is in a cold biome since last episode. So I'm thinking the coolest block to use here would be Prismarine. And we all know where that comes from. That meant there were now two options. Either I had to build a guardian farm up next, or we could pull off a major heist. So naturally, I decided to reject the reasonable option and steal an ocean monument. It had been ages ago since I last drained an ocean monument, but I was excited to get to work. The last time I did this, it took me a good two weeks to get the job done. This time, I was going to push as hard as I could, because again, I wanted nothing more than to get back to the castle construction. Using invisibility potions meant that the guardians didn't attack me while I dropped sugar loads full of sand into the ocean to divide the area around the monument into four white strips. Once the dividers were in place, all it took was a couple dozen trips to the nether to dry out the sponges after use, but after just a single stream, I had removed all the water from the area around the monument itself. Two weeks it took last time. And now it was one stream of about nine hours. The next morning, I carefully took the monument structure itself apart to secure all the blocks for my castle project. There's a good chance I'll make a guardian farm here later, since all the preparations are done anyway. But for right now, we were done here. So I took the shulkers of Prismarine that I had collected, or the full monument that I had stolen, and flew back to the castle. There was another item off the list, which meant there were now just a few left before we could start construction on the permanent castle walls. Diorite and polished diorite were simple enough actually. The diorite I just had laying around. I stockpiled it from mining out different spots like the Hall of Fame and the location of the end portal. I should really do something with this place soon by the way. But let's get back to the Hall of Fame real quick. I've added a new book right here. For every 1,000 subscribers we get before the 2,000 Days movie is out, I'll grab a name from the comment section on this video and I'll put it in the book. Grab your chance. Okay, back to work. I had the diorite covered and these four guys actually sell polished diorite. So that one was covered as well. That really only left the strip birch, which was easy. And then finally, we need a calcite. Now this one was a bit tricky. There are only two spots where you can reliably get calcite blocks. Amethyst geodes and the stony peaks by them, but that one's quite rare. Before I set out for my adventure, I placed a lodestone on top of the castle framework and made a lodestone compass, just to make sure I could find my way back home. Since I'm not using F3 in this world to navigate. You should definitely watch the 1000 Days movie after this video is done if you want to know what's up with that. Because I could now find my way back home, wherever I went, I was ready to venture out into the world in search of calcite. I figured that my best bet was probably looking for geodes that had generated on the ocean floor, making them easy to spot while flying above the water surface. So I brewed up a bunch of night vision potions and I flew out. The plan actually worked. I found some amethysts, set up a beacon and cleared them out. So before the stream was over, I was back home with a bunch of amethyst blocks and plenty of calcite to start building up the castle walls. Finally, we were ready for the real deal. The framework was still lacking some detail, but all the basic shapes were laid out and I liked what I was seeing. To make life a little easier during the next part of construction, I set up a jump boost beacon from the pumpkin and melon trading profits. And with that, I was ready for the sand walls to come down. Now, do you remember when I said that using sand as the framework was going to save us a lot of time further down the road? The thing is, if sand falls on top of anything else than a full block, it will break so you can remove an entire wall 
in a matter of seconds. As I remove the sand pillars, I replace the bottom line with cobblestone, the first block in our gradient. But then I realized we were about to run into an issue, and I realized it just in time. If I had not put a block on top of the sand walls that wasn't affected by gravity, I would have lost the shape of the walls. So assisted by the jump boost, I did a quick lap over the top of the castle walls with wool blocks. And soon enough, the walls were starting to take shape. From the cobblestone, I transitioned to diorite, then polished diorite and large amounts of calcite towards the top. Once we had the first wall up and I flew outwards away from the mountain, I knew that the gradient was going to work. So one wall section at a time, I made my way around the entire castle frame, replacing the sand with permanent walls until we had made enough progress to tear down the final wall in spectacular fashion. As I built back that last wall, it was time to start thinking about the next couple of steps. And looking back at it now, I had no idea how much of a difference they were going to make. The next day on stream, I started putting the roofs on top of the wool framework, a combination of deep slate tiles and polished deep slate that I mined out from under the super smelter we had built earlier. With the inner castle walls made up out of strip birch and sandstone variations, the structure started to look more and more like an actual castle. To give it more character, I added one elevated plaza above the inner castle with some prismarine details along the sides. But it wasn't until I put the roofs on the towers that things really started coming together. Just to make sure I didn't mess up the shape of the tower roofs, I made a wool and snow framework for reference. And once that made sense, I replaced it with deep slate as well. And soon after, there was just one tower that still needed to be completed. Now, this one was interesting, because here I had a lot more space to work with. So besides the deep slate, I had some room to fit in amethyst blocks to add a little more magic to the top of the castle. With only five blocks left between the top of the tower and the new build limit of Y319, this is easily the biggest project I have ever worked on. Just take a moment to realize how much space we still have to work with under this mountain. I'm sure you can dream up something magical down there. I know I can, but that would have to wait a little while longer. After constructing the main tower, I flew around the mountain and for the first time ever, it felt like I had a base in this new world, a real base. It is a feeling I had missed after losing my old hardcore world. But there was no time to sit around and enjoy it just yet. The castle still needed a lot more work before it started making sense. So I got some more blue wool and added the framework for the entrance gate. But just an entrance gate wasn't going to do it. This was the moment to step it up and transition from a foundation for a base to an actual base. At this point in the project, when all the basic shapes are constructed, I start looking for problem areas. Parts of the build that don't work just yet. In this case, there was a massive section of flat wall that looked really boring on this side. So I decided to cut out a hole and add a large window. With a combination of stairs and walls, I added an intricate window frame. That didn't solve my issue just yet though. This side of the castle needed something more. So I started a framework on the outside to build a conservatory-like room sticking out of the wall. And once again, I decided to use snow as a temporary block. I guess it's time to tell you why this is the best block in the game, right? Well, how about this? Name another block that you can collect from a tiny farm. Without destroying your world, you can insta mine it with a stone shovel and Enderman won't pick it up. This is the perfect temporary block, no doubt about it. And it doesn't even have to be temporary because it actually looks cool. Best block in the game changed my mind. With the extra structure on the side of the castle, the wall wasn't looking as problematic anymore. So I moved on to the next part of the castle. As it turns out, this would be the part of the build that would change everything for me. 
But before we could get started on it, I had to gather some very specific materials first. Oftentimes, it's the moments where you need to go out and find something that you come across the coolest places in your Minecraft world. I needed to get access to magenta dye from the Allium flowers, which meant I had to look for a flower forest. Pretty close to my base, I found one in a beautiful location. So I quickly built a flower farm, got all the alliums I needed, and then flew out to a warm ocean to get coral blocks. I really only needed the magenta ones here too, but I ended up collecting a bunch of all variations while I was in the area anyways. After picking it up in my boat, I flew back home and I was ready to start a build which would have a much more profound impact than I could have anticipated at the time. The idea was to get a small garden built up on one of the higher plazas of the castle and that was going to start with a special tree in the middle. Part of this tree was going to be built out of coral blocks. But to keep the coral alive, I had to fill up the center of the canopy with water. So first, I built the entirety of it in pink wool. Then, block by block, I started mixing in the coral and finally, the magenta glass around it to fill everything out. Now, you might be wondering, what's so special about this tree? Well, this is the moment where I got really inspired to take the castle to the next level. Up to this point, we've been working on the main structure of the castle, but there just isn't a lot of detail in the build yet. And that makes the tree look really out of place. So rather than leaving it for later, I decided that this issue needed to be solved right away. But to do that, I needed to collect some more resources that I didn't simply have laying around. A quick trip over the nether roof got me to the desert where I had been collecting sand so far. I had spotted a mangrove swamp nearby earlier where we could collect all the mud I would be needing. We could set up a farm for the mud of course, but these types of farms require an AFK player and since I don't AFK, that's not the solution here. Once I had all the mud I needed, I made my way back to the Lonely Mountain to gather up the weeds needed to craft packed mud bricks. That was only half of the resources required though. Mud bricks look amazing, but they look even better paired with jungle planks. So a quick trip to a tiny jungle I had found nearby was needed to collect some jungle wood to work with as well. With those blocks, I built up a floor for the castle garden, which already looked a lot better than the temporary snow floor I'd used before. But it looked weird to just have a tree in the middle, so I made a quick trip to the nether to gather some basalt as well. Then, I built a foundation of rich soil for the trees surrounded by a basalt wall. And with that done, it was time to go all out on the detailing and make a really exquisite castle garden. There was one issue though. This high up on the castle, I didn't really have room for a build like that. So I decided to expand the garden in the only direction it made sense, into the castle itself. And let me tell you, this garden was going to be a real game changer. Adding a detailed area to the castle finally made me realize what I was missing with this project. The whole build is so big that I've been doing nothing but big repetitive sections for a long time. It was time to take a quick break and build something smaller with proper detail. So I took a short break from the castle to build a cute windmill in between the crop fields near the base of the mountain. The snow framework for that build already looked quite nice, but it was when I started going crazy with different blocks, stairs, walls, trapdoors, and even glass panes, when everything sort of clicked into place. If I could apply the detail level of the windmill to the castle, then it would really start coming to life. But it wasn't just the details. All of a sudden, I knew exactly what I had to do because I recognized a problem that I had run into before. When I was building the mountain, I had taken so much care to make sure my entire world felt connected. But now, with the castle being so high up above anything else, the projects had started to drift apart again. The mangrove trail pathway that goes all the way from the starter house to the mountain had connected everything up before but it currently ended at the base of the mountain. Once more, 
the time had come to reconnect my world and make sure all the details in between felt coherent. So I laid out a temporary pathway with wool once again before I shot construction into overdrive. After all that, the castle just looks so special. I think this is officially the point in time where I like this world more than my previous hardcore world. And that's just based on the way it looks. Because this world has seen some stories that I haven't even told you yet. We'll save those for the 2000 Days movie. What a base we have though. I can't wait to show you what we're going to do next. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon. Ludi?